Our top story today. The longest ever NHS strike is now underway. Thousands of junior doctors in England have walked out. The six days of industrial action come at one of the busiest periods for the health service as hospitals struggle with rising rates of respiratory illnesses like flu and Covid. Well, joining us in the studio are Talk TV's political correspondent, Lucia Fitzgerald, former Conservative Special Advisor, Charlie Rowley, and we're also joined by Dr Sally Hassan. Let's start with you, uh, Dr Hassan, if you can. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, lots of your colleagues are on strike this morning. Um, do you support them? Well, I'm a doctor and I know exactly what they're striking about, um, having worked for about 14 winters in a row. Um, not only am I a doctor, but I have been making, f I, I work in journalism and I've been making films about winter pressures since 2010. It's been like, you know, blowing in the wind, just basically year on, year out, talking about the pressures, the existential threats being faced by specialties, especially emergency medicine, which is my specialty, every year and being ignored by White Whitehall. And what I do want to say, this current, I mean, and I can see this situation right now from the perspective of both as a doctor, as someone who's covered this journalistically for more than 10 years, and also as a patient. Yes, my own care has been disrupted both by strikes, but also by the spiralling waiting lists that have, uh, you know, climbed up to over 7 million since I think 2010, 2011, um, from 4.4 to 7.7. .7. So I can see this probably uniquely from a number of different perspectives. And I think, sadly, I think this was written on the wall that this was going to happen eventually, that doctors were pushed to a breaking point uh, where they had nowhere else to go. I'm so disappointed um, that it has come to this. Really Sally, disappointed. Yeah. Can I there've jump been in? Numerous, been, I just want to say there have been numerous um, opportunities to avert this. What I, And I just want to put this to yourselves. I just want to ask, why was it okay? You know, Scotland have managed to avert this. They, um, the doc junior doctors up there, accepted a 12.4 percent pay rise. Can I jump in um, then? Is it okay to speak? Sensible, Is it okay to speak? Very sensible. Uh, sorry, a very sensible Obviously um, not. Uh, agreement to do yearly negotiations to get back to pay restoration. Okay, okay. Let's 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 rise, let's just. Can we look at the other side for a minute? Is that all right with you? Uh, absolutely, because I'm a patient as well. Yeah, you, you talk about right? how you absolutely. see it from different perspectives. So if you could just listen to the other side, because I think it's great that you're here, and I think it's really important that we try and explain to people, because one of the things that I've gone on and on about is that I completely get what you're saying. When COVID was striking, we were out clapping. I've heard the argument that you haven't had a real rise in 14 years. But uh, what I will not be able to accept, and what none of you shut up enough to answer me is, is this. In the, in the way that this country is right now, in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis, with, as you quite rightly said, waiting lists at 7.5 million that will only rise, with people who will die because of this, balancing that all up, you have to understand, surely, that 35%, however much you justify that, when you use the example, quite rightly, of doctors in Scotland at 12.4, consultants at 13 and nurses at 5, that 35%, surely, Salia, is the issue. And I think the British public, and I could be wrong, and I mean this from the comments we've had this morning nicely, need to get this out to you, I think the British public are going to lose patience. And like me, I think a lot of people, when you consider that so many other unions have settled with this government, will start to think that the BMA, who will not come on shows like this, are doing this for political ends and using junior doctors as bait. And I really genuinely think you need to be able to answer those points. Seriously. Yeah, so, here, so here we go. So absolutely, barristers, 15% pay rise last year, 15% in, and, you know, barristers earn far more than junior doctors, um, but 15% pay rise to help clear the backlog of what they were having to deal with. What the junior doctors were offered versus the 12.4% in Scotland, here in the UK was 3%. So they were offered going up to £16 an hour versus £14 per hour. But let me put it into real term things, what it really looks like. As a junior doctor, the money that I was receiving 
and I am still a junior doctor, but I'm currently taking a bit of time out for burnout because of what I endured during um, COVID um, and basically trying to earn a little bit more money because being a junior doctor meant that I couldn't afford a mortgage, I couldn't afford my rent. And guess what? When the money that I had in the last week of the month meant that I was asking to borrow money from my mother to pay for petrol. And on top of that, on top of the money that we get, what well, but it I'm putting it into real terms now. To about two thousand that you take home um, after you've paid your rent, your bills, and your exams, and your fees, your BMA fees, your GMC fees, and money for exams. Exams come about five to six hundred pounds ago that we have to do to progress. C can You've I got ask, really Sally, left. just to try and take some of the heat out of this for a moment? Are you supportive of the BMA strategy? Because mm. it looks like there's a real deadlock here. The BMA are asking for something that both the leader of the, the government and the opposition say we, we can't give to Starmer you. Starmer says he so, ain't giving you 35%. Would you, so, do, do you I think there could be a point. different strategy that might help facilitate mm. conversations and getting around the table, or are you supportive no. of the BMA's action? Do you know what? Um, what I will say is that those talks broke down. I mean, they had a month-long talks in November. Those talks mm. broke down because of the government. What well, I Victoria want to do, Atkins because yesterday patient, said that know, she's happy to get back round the table and open her checkbook, Sally. And this is what I I, I, yeah. I, I I fail to understand. If you stop striking, she'll open up the checkbook and get round the table. So we've got two sides, as Rosie quite rightly says. And, and in the midst of all of this, whatever the rights and wrongs, the British public, and you made the really salient point as a patient, People will suffer and people will die. Can I just bring in Alicia, just for a sec? Sally, I'm so no, grateful. Don't go anywhere. Quickly, Can I bring in Charlie quickly. Rowley and Alicia? Charlie, um, there seem to be two schools of thought here. Absolutely, doctors should be given a rise. I want to read something to you from Sophie, somebody online to us. I think we should get junior doctors to sign something that means they stay in their positions for 10 years once qualified. We can then write off their student loans at the end of this period or pro rata if they leave earlier. At least this agreement would stabilise the NHS shortage for a while. Thoughts on this whole thing? Yeah, um, not a bad idea. And I think, look, you know, the government came forward with a long-term uh, NHS workforce plan to make sure that it's on a sustainable footing for the next 75 years. We just celebrated last year the 75th anniversary of the NHS because of all the great work that it does. But, look, I mean, uh, it's a, a, a very hot topic, and I understand the debate, but I'd rather just stick to the facts. And the facts are that it is a winter crisis. It always happens in the NHS. And at a time where more patients are going to need the NHS more than ever, uh, the BMA are calling for doctors to go on strike. Those patients will lose out. I understand that uh, you know you have a doctor and a broadcaster uh, 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 and um, uh, someone that is a patient. We're all patients. We all need to use the NHS at times. But that is the facts. Uh, I don't want to pit one public service against another. Barristers don't actually get paid that much money, particularly if you're a junior barrister, particularly in the criminal justice system. But that is something for the Department for uh, Justice to work out. This is something for the Department for Health to work out, which has a much bigger budget. Uh, it is not just uh, uh, in isolation to England. Uh, doctors in Wales are going on a three-day strike next week. But this is a six-day long strike at a time where the NHS is going to become under even more pressure than it usually does. And there are patients and people like Paul Farmer, uh, the, the, the chief executive of Age UK, who is extremely worried about older patients not being able to access that care. So I think it is right that you have a minimum service level, which the government has put forward to prevent strikes going uh, forward in the past. But on this particular strike, when we have a new health secretary, Victoria Atkins, who has not been in that job very long, who is happy to negotiate, that's offered a 3% uh, uh, rise. I know that's nowhere near the 35% rise. But as you've absolutely rightly said, nobody, whoever's in government, is going to offer that. So this is totally reprehensible. It is uh, uh, irresponsible. And I would encourage everybody, for the sake of patients, people that need to use that health service at a time when it is under pressure uh, in a winter uh, uh, situation that we have doctors to get back to the wall. Salia, respond to that if you could be so kind. I think what's irre irre irreprehensible is uh, the fact that the government, uh, Victoria Aitkins, has put conditions on when the talks can happen. The BMA and the junior doctors have said that they're willing to come to the table at any point, even up until the 11th hour, but she's put a condition on this. That condition didn't happen in Scotland. It didn't happen anywhere else. And it also didn't happen in other sectors. Um, the, what uh, condition, uh, Salia? What, what condition uh, for obvious? The, to, to, the strikes, call off the strikes. This, uh, again, this is not a precedent that uh, the government have worked to before. Why should I sit round a table with you if you're denying 
providing the service this, that you're paid for. They haven't done this for other sectors. They well, haven't put don't tell me any other, other person allows other, a discussion other, on more other. money if you're striking. Stop striking okay, and sorry, sit around the again. table. Oh, what's what's wrong with that again? as a condition? I don't understand. Could you say that again, please? I don't understand how you think. Imagine I'm Victoria Atkins, strange I know. Why would I want to sit around a table with you when you guys are striking for something I'm paying you for? Come to the table with me and we'll do it professionally. I have to say the one thing that you won't answer... I'm not blaming you, by the way. I understand where you're coming from and I really appreciate you being here because I want both sides. Nobody from the BMA will answer this question. I believe this is politically motivated. I'm with Charlie Rowley. I think it's the time of year. Every single... Hear me out. Every single other, whether it's barristers, whether it's nurses, whether it's consultants, whether it's railway drivers, they have all said... Settled. No longer is it looking like a general strike. You are on your own. And I fear that the BMA is going to turn public opinion against hard-working, decent people like yourselves, who I absolutely accept it must take huge... I don't know the right word, to do what you're doing. Frustration, anger, whatever. But I do think it's salient to make this point. The man that you all want in number 10 has publicly said... You ain't getting 35%. So when I hear you going on about Victoria Atkins, and yes, three is ridiculous, tell me a figure that the BMA consider to be realistic that Starmer might give you or this government might give you that might end this mess. What do you want? Give me a figure. Do you know, here we go. And when you say, what do you want? Sensible, sensible figures. Three percent. You, you've said it yourself. Hmm. That's ridiculous. Scotland gave twelve. No, no longer is thirty-five percent. No, Give me a sensible figure. Come on. Well, I, I, I'm not part of the BMA. I'm not. Hold on. But well, why don't we start it? You're, you're saying. What like, would you like, accept as a why, doctor? Why? What like, would you accept? What would I accept? I would. Ex I would accept something. I mean, and it's not. It, it would. It, a figure would be arrived at and it would be put to all members of the BMA. What would you would personally decide. accept? So, do you know what? If I was in Scotland, I'm a Scotland-trained doctor. I, I trained in Scotland. If I was still in Scotland, I would have voted yes for 12 point So why don't you and go back only, to your paymasters at the BMA and tell them only, to ask for 12%? Not, not only 12.4, but also sensible discussions every single year for three years to get back to pay restoration. But you've but done it. Thing, you've said it. You've just Jeremy, said that if you... Jeremy, hold on a second. You've Jeremy, said if you were a Scottish doctor, 12.4 would be acceptable. Agree, agree, Why? You're talking agree. over me. Why I isn't 12.4% acceptable in the United Kingdom? Why don't you and your union friends say, we want 12%, but you don't. You talk over everybody. Why is 12 OK in Scotland, but not in the United... in England? Why not? Over me. You're talking over me. Ask for 12% then. I'm trying then. to tell you, I'm trying to just finish a point, a very important point of what you had said, that you think it's political. I agree. I think it is political. OK. And I, tell, I think it's political from the point of the government. I was on this show not so long ago with you talking about the horrors, um, uh, 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 whether it was you, I, I think it was you, I've been on so often. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was about... COVID and the COVID inquiry, yeah, yeah. Were really awful dodgy deals. Honestly, Jeremy, and I'm saying this and I agree to come on because I can see, and I've been watching this space for a very long time, a car crash happening. You, do you know why I think that the government in the in England are behaving the way that they're doing, in the way that possibly Scotland aren't, okay, um, tell me. and that they're being sensible, is because they've got other plans for the NHS. Do you know that they are training over 10,000 physician associates to take the place of doctors. That's why they're not in a hurry to come to the table. Okay. That's Listen, why let me, Steve let me, Barclay was as let good me, as the ice sculpture Let me in the say this. Of, Sally, you know this, and you know this personally. I love the fact that you come on here. We have... And I'm not even going to lie, because I'm really honest with people, the BMA are a no-show. You are there, your head's above the parapet. I absolutely buy your passion. And the one thing that I think about a show like this is you can disagree with someone till the cows come home, but that is what a democracy is about. All I would say, and we won't point score off each other, I do not believe that 3% is realistic. I do not believe that 35% is realistic. And to finish this, you might be shocked by what I'm going to say to you. I have long advocated... I don't understand why a nurse gets 5, a consultant gets 13, and Scotland doctors get 12. Like MPs, it should be an across-the-board offer to everybody who works in the NHS, whatever their grade, that is acceptable. But I want to say this to you. Thank you so, so much, Salia.
for coming on. Continue to come on, and I appreciate it. And Charlie and Alicia, I'm so <laughs> sorry you didn't get to say an awful lot. That's all right. We enjoyed watching that. It's fine. Yeah. Do you know what will yeah. be interesting, though? Coming up after at 8 o'clock, we're going to be hearing from Labour to ask a lot of those questions, which says, OK, you're in power. Mm -hmm. What deal would you put around the table? Would you put conditions to the BMA to say stop striking and then we'll talk? But very quickly, it is interesting. My whole argument about 35%, and I would say the same, Charlie, at three. Mm. Don't offer them three when you've offered nurses five and then 13. It's a standoff of, of ridiculousness and the patient suffers. What the government and they need to do is understand there has to be some middle ground. Would you agree with Definitely. that? Definitely. It's all about compromise, and that's the trouble. We're not getting a compromise from either side at the moment until that happens. There's going to be no progress. That's the less she's and, ever spoken in her life. And <laughs> truthfully, they're not having the conversations to start compromising. No. That is there the problem. And you can criticise both the government and the BMA for that. We will continue to ask the BMA to come on the programme. And, and Jeremy can have up. an argument with them instead. <laughs> I'm not having an argument with them. I absolutely respect a rigorous them. Debate. getting 35% in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Charlie, Alicia, thank you so much. All yours.